Welcome to RBC's Markets in Motion podcast, recorded June 13th, 2023. I'm Lori Calvacina, Head of U.S. Equity Strategy at RBC Capital Markets. Please listen to the end of this podcast for important disclaimers. Three big things you need to know. First, we continue to see expectations for a 2024 economic recovery embedded in GDP forecasts, and a healing process in earnings expectations is also underway, something we've been writing a lot about recently. Second, sentiment is embarking on its own recovery, with net bullishness returning to the AAII investor survey last week. And third, small caps appear to be getting their own recovery started, with a gain of more than 6.6% so far in June through Friday's close, well in excess of the S&P 500's gain. Passive inflows helped fuel the rebound, but we think the move is justified and remain overweight small versus large. If you'd like to hear more, here's another five minutes. While you're waiting, a quick reminder that if you found our work helpful, we'd appreciate your vote in this year's Institutional Investor All-America Research Survey in the Portfolio Strategy category. Voting is open now and expected to close June 23rd. Now the details. Takeaway number one. Expectations for a 2024 economic recovery persist and earnings expectations continue to heal. We've been talking and writing a lot recently about the concept of recovery and its contribution to the strong move in the S&P 500 of late. One of the things we think the bears on U.S. equities have forgotten about is that the stock market is inherently a discounting mechanism. Big things often get priced in ahead of time. 2022 performance priced in challenges to the economy and earnings backdrop that are unfolding now, and our read on 2023 pricing is that it's at least partly being driven by unfolding expectations about 2024. On the economy, consensus GDP forecasts are expecting quarter-over-quarter growth to return in early 2024, despite recent downward revisions to 2024's full-year forecast. On earnings, bottom-up 2023 earnings forecasts among the stock-picking sell side have stabilized, as is normally the case around mid-year in downgrade cycles. And the rate of upward earnings estimate revisions on the sell side has also improved to 57% in early June. We're now seeing mostly upward revisions again. And most sectors in the S&P 500 are experiencing positive revisions to both earnings and revenue forecasts right now, meaning this is a broad-based shift. Moving on to takeaway number two, a recovery also now appears to be underway in investor sentiment. Like earnings revision trends, investor sentiment is also midway through a healing process. Last week, bulls surged and outnumbers the bears for the first time since February 2023 in the weekly AAII survey of individual investors. The shift in the data was striking and moved up to more than 20%, but was still shy of the 30% level that, on a four-week average, often signals trouble ahead for the stock market. On the four-week average, it's worth noting that this indicator is still tracking at minus 4%. The improvement we've started to see in AAII is similar to the pickup in positioning among asset managers that we've been seeing in the weekly CFTC data for S&P 500 E-minis recently, a recovery which appears to be middle innings. Interestingly, NASDAQ mini future positioning among asset managers has broken through the high end of the range it's been stuck in over the past few years. Wrapping up with takeaway number three, small caps appear to be getting their own recovery started with an assist from passive flows. Small caps are also trying to participate in the recovery theme, with a gain of more than 6.6% in June through Friday's close. That's been well in excess of the S&P 500's 2.8% gain and NASDAQ's 2.5% move over the same time frame. The outperformance of small caps has been striking and started after the relative ratio between the Russell 2000 and S&P 500 came close to hitting its March 2020 low. As we come through higher frequency data at the end of last week, the thing that jumped out to us the most on small caps was the improvement in flows to small cap funds that occurred in June so far. Digging down a bit deeper, we noticed that the improvement has been driven by broad-based blend funds, and more specifically, passively managed funds. That latter data point is something that's likely to fuel skepticism of the move. Even though passive inflows have clearly helped fuel the rebound, we think the move that the Russell 2000 has experienced is justified and remain overweight small caps relative to large caps. Last week, we highlighted how earnings revision trends have also started to turn positive for the Russell 2000 again, a development that's been driven by multiple sectors. Valuations have also been compelling for the Russell 2000 versus its own history, as well as on a relative basis versus the S&P 500. And on this latter data point, it's worth noting that the compelling valuations in small relative to large are seen for most sectors outside of a couple. 
Beyond small caps improvement in the earnings backdrop and compelling and deep valuation profile, we've also been highlighting how periods of economic stress are normally good entry points for small caps midway through. Small caps tend to start out performing midway through recessions around when the unemployment rate begins to rise and around when tightness in CNI lending standards is coming to a peak. Small caps also tend to outperform during easing cycles. Our rate strategy team has been highlighting how markets have mostly priced out 2023 cuts, but are still baking them in for 2024. Given how forward-looking small caps have been over the last few years, it's rational to assume that small caps are focusing more on the possibility of 2024 cuts than the potential for maybe just one more hike in 2023. That's all for now. Thanks for listening, and be sure to reach out to your RBC representative with any questions. This content is based on information available at the time it was recorded and is for informational purposes only. It is not an offer to buy or sell or a solicitation, and no recommendations are implied. It is outside the scope of this communication to consider whether it is suitable for you and your financial objectives.